Good morning. Can you all hear me? Yes. All right, sorry about the delay. My uh, internet decided to boot me off right as I connected this at nine. And uh, so hopefully uh, I'll get the uh, whiteboard up in just a minute. We can get started. All right, so uh, while I'm getting everything set up on my end, uh, any questions that you guys would like to start with? Uh, I had a question from the web work for 10.2. Okay. Um, number three, uh, A and D, I ran into a problem um, with the formula that I came up with because I ended up with an n minus one squared in the denominator and we were asked to take the sum beginning at n. Okay, so let's see, where is your, um, so this is homework 20? Yeah. Number five? Uh, okay. Number three. Oops, number three, okay. Um, yeah, so, were you able to get answers for some of the other parts? Yeah, I was. I was able to get the answer for three, so I okay. know that the formula was correct. I I got all the other parts, but I'm confused on the first on the formula. Yeah. yeah. So the the what you no, may notice is that 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 does give you the correct answer for uh, a three, right? Is that what you found? Yeah. Okay, and that formula will give you the correct answer for a two. It will give you the correct answer for A4, A5, A6, all the way on up, but it does not give you the correct answer for A1 because you'd be dividing by zero. Mm -hmm. And that is not necessarily a problem. Uh, it's very easy to find exactly what A1 would be because the partial sums, uh, mm -hmm. Sn, is the sum of the first n terms. So what would S1 be? Well, it would be just be, or it would just a1 right yes and so okay. if you want to find a1 it would be 3 minus uh, 7 I guess oh oh I see okay and then you could could you add that to the sum of um, from n equals 2 to 10 to get the first answer um, so let's see. So which answer did you not get? Um, a. A. Okay. So this A and uh, are actually they're easier maybe than you think. So let me get my uh, my whiteboard up now that it seems like it's connected. So you have S N mm -hmm. is given by three minus seven over n squared. Now what does S N mean? Well, that's the sum of all of the, you're adding up all of the individual parts um, up to n. So you would have a1 plus a1 um, plus 2, and then a1 plus 3, or a1 plus 2 plus 3. Uh, okay, so, so I think you're confusing uh, a couple of things. So the, the, there's, there's the sequence, which goes like a1, a2, a3 mm -hmm. and so on yeah. and then there's the series which goes a1 a1 plus a2 a1 plus a2 plus a3 okay this is just a sequence so 
so when we just say SN, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're describing the terms in the series. So this would be uh, S3. But if I say SN, I'm not adding up all of those. I'm just adding up the first N terms. Oh, right. OK. okay. Agreed? Yeah. So, so when they ask you, uh, no, but, well, before I say that, uh, notice that that could be written as the sum from n equals 1 to n, from little n equals 1 to big N, of mm -hmm. an. Right? That's just shorthand for the sum that we wrote up above. Yeah. OK. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this other stuff here. And now they asked you in the first part of A to find the sum of a n from n equals 1 to 10. So how could we write that in terms of s? Um, We'd like to express that in terms of partial sums. So what yeah. partial sum or partial sums would we need? So, so that would be a1 plus a2 plus a3 all the way up to um, plus a10. OK, that's right. Mm -hmm. But notice that is a partial sum, right? We're not adding up all of the a's, but we're adding up the first 10 of them. Yeah. Right? And so we might call that s, what would the subscript be? Um, s10. S10. And notice we have a formula to find s with any subscript. Right? We're told in the beginning of the problem that Sn is 3 minus 7 over n squared. So S10 must be 3 minus 7 over what should go in the denominator? 10 squared. 10 squared. Okay. All right. So that, that takes care of the first part. And for the second part, they give you a sum. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make something up here. Uh, that's not exactly what you're given because I want you to be able to figure it out. But say that they asked you for the sum from n equals 6 to 11 of a n. Okay. We would like to sum up those terms. Now notice that's not exactly a partial sum because it, it doesn't include all of the terms from 1 to 11. It's only started at 6. So it's okay. not in the correct form yet. But what we could do is we could think of that as the sum from n equals 1 to 11. Mm -hmm. But since that includes some extra stuff, we'll subtract off the ones that we don't want. Which which ones would we want to exclude here? Um, one through five. Exactly. Okay. And so notice that first one, the sum from one to 11, that's just S11. That's, a, again, a partial sum. And that mm -hmm. second one that we're subtracting off is also a partial sum from one to five. So that's S5. And so if we go back up to our formula up above, we can plug both of those in uh, and compute their difference to get the answer. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's okay. All right, so the purpose of this exercise is to get comfortable manipulating partial sums and relating them to the terms in the sequence. And so we can subtract two partial sums to find the sum of terms in a given range from n equals six to 11 or four to 16 or whatever they ask you for in the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can also uh, go in the opposite direction, right? Once we know the individual terms in the sequence, we can often find partial sums. And that's what the, the next batch of videos will focus on. OK, cool. All right, any other questions? Hearing a lot of crickets right now. Would you, would you all like to work through an example? Uh, that would be good, yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's, let's do an example of uh, finding a formula for the partial sums, and we'll do another one where we're finding the terms in the sequence from the partial sums. All right. Uh, so as an example, 
let's consider the sequence uh, an equals the sine of n plus 1 minus the sine of n. And what we're going to do is we're going to list off a1, a2, all the way out to a4, and then find a formula for Sn, the nth partial sum. Okay? So listing off the terms is straightforward. We're basically just plugging in whatever the subscript is, wherever we see n. And so a1 would be sine of 2 minus the sine of 1, right? We're plugging in 1 for n in the equation up top. And if I want to plug in, uh, or if I want a2, I'll just plug in a 2 instead, and I'll get sine of 3 minus sine of 2. And a4 would be sine of 4 minus sine of, skipped 1. How about a3? Sine of 4 minus sine of 3 would be a3. And hopefully you've got the pattern now. a4 would be sine of 5 minus sine of 4. Okay? So those are the terms in the sequence. Now let's think about the terms in the series. So S1 would be just A1. S2 would be A1 plus A2. S3 would be A1 plus A2 plus A3, and so on. And so the first couple ones are pretty straightforward. Uh, S2 would be sine 2 minus sine 1 plus sine 3 minus sine 2. And you may notice that we have a plus sine 2 and a minus sine 2. And so those actually cancel out, and we're left with just sine 3 minus sine 1. And if we do that for the next term, uh, notice S3, that's just really S2 plus the next term. So we could write that as sine 3 minus sine 1, that's the S2 part, plus A3, which was sine 4 minus sine 3. And again, uh, we have a term that's repeated, right? We have a sine 3 that shows up twice, once with a plus sign and once with a negative sign. And so this simplifies down to sine 4 minus sine 1. And you may see where this is headed. Uh, notice there seems to be a pretty clear pattern. When we take the sine of uh, a number n, it looks like we have a, uh, on the right-hand side, or sorry, when we take the partial sum with subscript n, on the right-hand side, we have the sine of 1 a lot larger than that minus the sine of 1, right? When the subscript was 1, we have sine 2. When the subscript was 2, we have sine 3. When the subscript was 3, we have sine 4. And so the nth partial sum looks like it should have a sine of n plus 1. And then in each of them, we were just subtracting a sine 1. And so uh, assuming this pattern actually holds, this is not a proof, but this is at least just trying to figure out the pattern. Uh, and that would indeed be the correct answer, that the partial sum with n terms is just going to be the sine of n plus 1 minus the sine of 1. Okay? Any questions about how we got that? All right, at least a couple of you say no. So uh, hopefully that means we're tracking. Uh, and the nice thing about this is, uh, once we've got a formula for Sn, if we want to figure out what the series adds up to, if it does indeed converge, we can just look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the partial sums, which is equivalent to just saying, what happens if I keep adding more and more and more terms? What's that going to approach? And if this limit exists, then its value will be the sum of the infinite number of terms, the infinite series. Uh, and if it doesn't exist, then that would mean that that series is not really approaching anything at all. And in this case,
what we'll see is, well, sine of one isn't going anywhere, but sine of n plus one goes up and down, up and down, up and down, over and over again. Since that's what the graph of the sine of x looks like, we're basically just going to be bouncing around here. And so it's not really going to approach any particular value uh, as n goes to infinity. And so we would say this uh, limit does not, uh, does not exist. And so the series diverges. OK? So the sum is not approaching anything in particular. All right, let's try an example in the other direction. Let's suppose that the partial sums have the form uh, 2 plus 1 over n. All right, let's assume that the partial sums uh, have that form. And so this is like we, we've kind of skipped ahead to this boxed formula from the previous example. Uh, and what we'd like to find out from there is what is a n. What are the individual terms that we would need to add up to get a partial sum like that? All right, so let's let's write down exactly what this means. S n is the sum of a one plus a two plus a three all the way on up to a n. Agreed. And so if I want a particular n. Notice I'm really interested in that last one, right? We're interested in finding that very last term in the sum. Uh, but we've got all, well, all we have now is a formula that tells us how to compute the sum of, well, the first n. So if we're interested in a n, well, we could rearrange that equation and get a n by itself. That would be equal to uh, s n minus a1 plus a2 all the way on up to a n minus 1. So essentially what we've done is we've just brought that sum over to the other side. And then the question is, what is this quantity? What is that quantity, a1 plus a2 all the way on up to a n minus 1? Uh, I'll actually uh, wait for an answer on this one. Uh, who wants? Who has an idea of how we could describe that sum? If you're not sure, go ahead and click the no button in the participants window. If you think you have the idea, have the idea feel free to just chime in here. All right, so a couple of you are saying you're not sure. Well, what I want you to notice is that looks like a partial sum, doesn't it? It's adding up the first, a first batch of terms, starting with 1 all the way up to n minus 1. And so this can be written as s. And then we just need to choose the right subscript, so we're including the right number of terms. And notice if sn includes the terms from 1 to n, and this is all the terms from 1 to n minus 1, then this must be just sn minus 1. Does that make more sense, Griffin and Garrett? OK. All right, so if that's the case, if that's Sn minus 1, then what we've shown is that the term is just the difference between consecutive partial sums. If here I'm adding up 1, to n minus 1, and here I'm adding up 1 to n. When I subtract them, the only one that doesn't cancel is the nth term. All right, and that's what we wanted to find. And since we had a formula that we were given for the, the partial sums, then we can actually compute the two quantities on the right. Uh, we'll have 2 plus 1 over n minus uh, sn minus 1 would be 2 plus 1 over n minus 1. 
And when we compute the difference, we're left with just one over n minus one over n minus one. And so there we go. That is the formula for the things that we're adding up. If you were to take the series from uh, n equals, uh, I'm going to leave that alone for just a second. Uh, if you're to add up one over n minus one over n minus one uh, from Well, there's a problem here. Notice in the denominator here, if I plug in one, that's not going to work. That formula would be have divi division by zero. And so this formula will work for two on up. And if I wanna know A1, well, if we go back up just a minute, S1 should be the sum of the first term. And according to this formula up top, S1 should be 2 plus 1 over 1, which is 3. And so there's A1. And then this formula that we derived works for all the other values at n from 2, 3, 4 on up. And that should be equal to 2 plus 1 over n. All right, did I lose you there? Are there any questions about how we got that? All right, so it seems like we've got a basic handle. Uh, I, I can do one more example if you all like. We can do uh, shifting the index for a series. Would that be helpful? All right, George says yes, so it must be true. Uh, let's look at the series. The sum from n equals two to infinity of three over, uh, let's make it more interesting. Let's make it three plus six to the n over nine raised to the n plus one. Okay, and let's write this in terms of something that looks like this. So what we'd like is a series that starts with n equals zero and where the thing inside the series is just a constant time some number raised to the n. Okay? So we'd like to write it in this form. And the reason for this is, as you see in the next batch of videos, this is what's called a geometric series. And we actually can figure out exactly what that sums up to. Uh, and so if we can express this original problem in the form CR to the N for some from zero to infinity, then we can actually uh, simplify this pretty dramatically. Okay, so how do we do that? All right, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, to split this up and I'm not going to worry about the indices yet. I'm going to just try to get it to look like CR to the N. All right, and notice we have a sum in the numerator. And so we could actually write that as the sum of three over nine to the N plus one plus six to the n over nine to the n plus one. We can split that into two. And as long as these series converge, not only can we do that, but instead of adding up uh, the sum of each of those, we could just sum them up individually. And so we can write that as two sums. Are you with me so far? Okay, all right, so that looks a little better. Now, now we're getting closer. Uh, let's worry about the indices now. So in the original sum, we started with n equals two. 
we'd now like to start with n equals zero. In both cases, we have an infinite number of terms, so we're just going on forever. So we'll keep the upper limit the same, but we want to make sure that we're adding up the same things. And so if you look at this first term, what's the first power that would be included in the sum? It's going to be nine raised to what power? Someone just go ahead and shout it out. Uh, in the bottom sum, if we, if we use n equals zero, it would be one. But notice here in the top, we started with n equals two. And so when we plug in that, what are we going to get? Three. All right. So we want our first term down here to have a power of three so that it matches the one above. And so if we just put n, that wouldn't work. And if I put n plus one, that would be starting with one. That's not right either. We would need to start with n plus three so that we get uh, a power of three for the first value of n that's indicated by the sum. All right, so since the new sum starts with zero, we essentially decrease the starting value by two, which means we in need to increase all of the n's by two inside of the sum. Okay, so that's the first one. And for the second one, Uh, oh, let's start with zero again on that one as well. We'd like to uh, start with zero and we want to make sure that our exponents match up. And looking at the, the, the expression above, notice the six should start with a second power. Uh, so, so Georgia, so the top would be n equals two. Uh, right. When we start with n equals two, we want to start with two. But since the bottom sum has n equals zero, what do I need to add here, George, to get to get a power of two? two? Two. Awesome. All right. And then the bottom, we want our exponent to start with three because it started with n equals two above. And so we'll have an n plus three in the denominator. All right. So it's getting a little better. We now split it up. So it looks like we have uh, two simpler sums. We've shifted our indices. So they now start, start with zero. And all that's left is we want to manipulate it to get it in the right form. And this is where, uh, notice we have lots of nth powers, but we also have some extra powers, the plus three and the plus two and so on. And so what we can do is we can use some of our uh, basic properties of exponents. Uh, nine, to, uh, 9 to the n plus 3 is the same as 9 to the n times 9 to the 3. And in the second term, we could write this as 6 to the n times 6 squared and 9 to the n times 9 cubed. We're just pulling off some of those, those extra powers of n, or extra powers of 9 and 6. And so we're getting really close now. Uh, I'm going to group all of the things that don't have an n together. We'll have 3 over 9 cubed times 1 over 9 to the n. And notice, if I raise 1 to the n, that doesn't change anything since the 1 stays the same. Right? 1 multiplied by itself, any number of times is still 1. And so that takes care of the first term. And for the second term, uh, we would have, let's see, we've got 6 squared over 9 cubed. And that's times 6 over 9 to the n. We could take treat that as a fraction, raise the whole fraction to the nth power, since both the numerator and the denominator were raised to the n. And so now we have our constant. And we have r, our ratio. for both of them. And if I scroll back up, it does look like it matches the form that we were actually interested in originally. OK, and it turns out that there is a nice formula for this. That sums up to c over 1 minus r. 
And so what we can say is these bottom sums actually add up to 3 over 9 cubed over 1 minus 1 ninth. So here I'm just plugging in the C and the R to that formula. And the second term would be 6 squared over 9 cubed over 1 minus 6 over 9. And now we've gotten rid of the sums entirely. Now, this formula, you have to watch the next batch of videos to understand where that came from. Uh, so that's only going to be true if r is between negative 1 and 1, or the absolute value of r is less than 1. But in this case, both of the r values were 1 ninth and 6 ninths. Uh, so that would indeed be true, which means this formula is valid. Okay? So this is a little preview of what we're going to do uh, in the second uh, section of chapter 10.2. Uh, but it, it relies on some of these uh, some manipulation techniques uh, that we talked about in the, the videos that you all already watched. Uh, and so the hope is that you'll get those uh, sum manipulations down really well. So we can shift indices, we can relate partial sums to uh, individual terms and vice versa, so that when we get to in these types of series like the geometric and telescoping series, you'll be comfortable ap actually manipulating them. All right, any questions about this example? All right, I've got no's from a couple of you. Uh, for those of you who haven't chimed in yet, uh, I'm going to assume the answer is no if I don't hear from you. Uh, at this point, I think we've gone through enough examples. Hopefully that gives you enough to get, uh, get uh, some progress on the web work. If you would uh, like to ask additional questions, I'm happy to stick around. Uh, but otherwise, I think we'll wrap up here and you're free to disconnect and we'll, uh, I'll be Available again at 1 if you have more questions. Otherwise, we'll touch base on Friday. You're welcome. Have a good morning.